Hey guys, and welcome back to another tutorial. Today, I'm going to teach you how to use the Paper Mario 60 for randomizer and how to download and set up this so you can play it. Right now, I'm on the Paper Mario 60 for randomizer website, which is a spaghetti pile of options to customize your randomization. Some options will change what items get randomized. If you don't know what an option will change, you can always hover your cursor over it to read about it. Other options change how expensive moves and badges are to use. There are even options that change how the game will look. However, I would not recommend turning on random pitch or random text. It can be more annoying than an invisible block above a bottomless pit. If you've never played the randomizer before, try clicking on the help tab on the header and choosing useful tips. It will tell you information the randomizer will expect you to know. Like when it expects you to beat the dojo and how to move around without jumping. As you can see, there really are more options than there are times Mario has dreamed about regularly. You can really make this however hard or easy you want. The devs have really done a fantastic job with this mod and website. Now, at the bottom are the spoiler settings. You should turn on include spoiler log just in case you get stuck looking for a key icon, especially if you randomize the RP panels. You'd rather get your hints in game. You smell lovely item hints to buy a hint from her instead. Now we can generate the seed. You'll be brought to this page that has your seed at the end of your spoiler log. Don't worry about losing this page. The website will use cookies to bring you back in if you click most recent seed on the header. Right here is your spoiler log. It tells you what item is in every location. To see the blurry text, you can either uncheck hide item names to reveal them all, or highlight the blurry text and copy it to clipboard to see an individual spoiler. Right here, I select my .d64 ROM file for Paper Mario so that the website can pack the randomized feed onto it. I can't tell you where to get this file, but a quick Google search should help you, kind of like a pre-mod guide. You can name this new .d64 file anything you want, but I'm going to call it Paper Mario Randomized. Now we move on to downloading and setting up this arc. If you already have done these steps, you're free to skip ahead. If you're a Windows user, first we have to install the prereqs. You can find the link to the download in the description. Click the drop down and download the top option. Once it downloads, open the files location, right click the zip file, and select expect all. Once it's in extracting, open the new folder and run the exe file. You can't tell, but right here, I'm telling my computer to allow the program to make changes to my hard drive. Don't worry, this program wasn't developed by Bowser and is safe to use. Now you're prompted with this menu. Select OK to install the free racks. What this actually means is that the program checks to see if your computer has certain packages installed. If it doesn't, you will install them. Professor Gad once told me that a package is just a tiny extra capability for your computer. It might take a little while for the packages to install, which is completely okay. You just need to be patient while the tiny form and fuzzies inside your computer do their thing. In the meantime, you could grab a shroom shake the drink while you wait. Now that the pre -recs are installed, you can delete the zip and exe files you downloaded. And we'll move on to downloading this app. The link for this is also in the description. Click the drop down. If you're using Linux, download the top option, the one titled Linux. If you're using Windows like me, download the one titled Vim. Once downloaded, open the file location and extract that spicy meatball just like you extracted the pre -recs. Right click and hit extract all. This time, because there are a lot of files, the extraction process will be as slow as a side scroller with no run button. When it's all extracted, you may want to place the new folder in a neat location so it doesn't clutter your desktop. Make sure you put it in your preferred location before non jumping to the next bit, because we're gonna create a shortcut, and the shortcut will game over if you change the file's location. Now that it's all extracted, you can delete the zip you downloaded. Now to be extra super Luigi clean, you'll want to create a folder to store your ROM files. Open the Bizhawk folder, right click and create new folder. Like before, you can name this whatever you like, but I'll name it ROMs. Now you can locate the past Paper Mario 60 for file and any other ROMs you might have and put them in your ROMs folder. I like to use the keyboard shortcuts Ctrl X and Ctrl V to easily move the file. Mario prefers dragging and dropping, but I think that's slow. Anyway, now we'll create a desktop shortcut so we can easily run this off. Right click the MU Hawk.exe and click copy his path. Now go to your desktop, right click an empty area, and create the shortcut. Then you can hit Ctrl V to paste the files path you copied earlier, then you can name the shortcut anything you want. I will call it BizHawk. Now we have a shortcut that goes right to the emulator. 
this like a warp pipe. Now, open this up. You might get a warning from your computer that the application is from an unknown publisher. Just click more info, and you can click run anyway. Just like where you Your computer can sometimes get in the way. Now we finally have this hook fully installed and opened. May not seem too impressive, but it's got tons of useful features, especially if you want to create a perfect test for Mario and Luigi's Superstar Saga. By the way, this hook can run more than just in 60 frames. Now click the config drop down and select paths. From there, we'll tell the emulator where we stashed our ROMs. In the ROM tab, tap that slash and then the name of your ROMs folder. This next step isn't necessary, but I recommend it more than I'd recommend shopping at Coconut Mall. We're going to tell BizHawk to automatically write our saved data to the computer every now and then so you don't lose any data if your power goes out. Select Config, then Customize. Now go to the Advanced tab and check the Auto Save RAM checkbox. Now we're actually going to start our ROM. Click File, Open ROM. And navigate to the ROM you want to play, and run it. I'm gonna quickly turn the volume down under config and sounds because this hook can be a little loud. Now we let the game load in Mamma Mia. There's a spooky error screen. Don't worry, this is expected. Just click the N60 for drop down and check the use expansion slot checkbox. I'm not quite sure why this isn't checked by default, honestly. Now click the emulation drop down and select Reboot Core. Yep, reboots the core, kind of like how the robot needs its flavor as always be flavorized occasionally. Now we must configure our controller. Go to config then controllers. Here you can see Mondo load the buttons you can configure to your taste. I'll show you how to configure analog control stick movements though because it's an easy step to miss. Just hit the analog controls and hit the upper bind button. This one configures the X axis. Move your control stick left and right once to bind. Now click the bottom bind button for the Y axis. Tilt up and down once to bind. Now the control stick should fluidly move just like it would on console. Now, I'll create a file real quick to showcase what everything is like. Uh, yes, my name's Luigi, Luigi number one. Starting up the new file, you'll notice how we spawn in Totan. If you'd rather spawn in Goomba Village, that's something you can configure when generating your seed. You might also notice how the graphics look like you've been blooperinged and binded. I would recommend increasing the video resolution so that the game can look pretty cute and Princess Peach. All you need to do is click on the N60 for drop-down menu and select plugins. Then, from that menu, go down to video resolution and open the drop-down menu. Now you can select a much higher than default resolution so the game isn't as pixelated in the distance. I usually have my resolution set to 1024. Now we must go to emulation and reboot the core again so our video adjustments can take effect. You just need to let the game load again and open up my file once more. Mario has never been one for beauty, so he always leaves the resolution on default. I'm impressed at how it doesn't bother him. Now that the game's loaded up again, you can see the drastic difference in video quality. Stuff in the distance is now more than 8 pixels. Luigi like that. Now you have this hawk in the Paper Mario randomizer fully set up and ready to play. I hope you found this as helpful as a hidden dev cat. I'll catch you in my next tutorial on how to snag warrior's garlic without him catching you. Bye bye.